In part two of our color theory exploration, you're gonna need a primary palette. I'll be using a watercolor one, and any watercolor set will do as long as you have red, yellow, and blue. And if you miss part one, don't worry, just go to my YouTube channel in a playlist called Color Theory. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about is what when you hear complementary colors. So there's colors and you'll see it next time you're in a store, even um, on ads and stuff, there's colors that they purposefully use with each other and it's because they make each other pop. And so in this case, it's gonna be red and green. Then we have purple and yellow, orange and blue. And if any of you get your hair done, especially if you get it blonde and your blonde is more up on this spectrum, they'll usually use purples and blues because it will neutralize the color. And so I'm gonna show you right now how we're gonna do that. When you're neutralizing a color, you're just adding a little bit of the complementary color. We're gonna take some yellow here. When we put it down on paper, you're gonna see that it's very bright. To offset some of that bright, we're gonna use the complementary color. So in this case, we had said that the yellow is going to be across from the purple. So we're gonna take a little purple. So I'm gonna have to mix a little purple here. So I'm gonna do blue. And the red to get purple. Okay, I'm going to take just a little bit of, actually I'm gonna wipe some of that off. I barely want any of the purple in there. Okay, but I'm gonna show you the difference. It made it darker. And actually, let me turn a light on. There we go. And so you can see there that it muted it. It's not so bright. So now we're gonna add just a little touch, touch more. and it's almost looking like a green to me. It's got like a green cast to it. And we'll keep going. We'll keep adding little by little into it. And so whenever you have a palette, especially if you buy like one of the starter palettes, sometimes they can be a little bright you know, kind of what you would call like elementary. They're not as, I don't wanna say sophisticated, but the colors are just more bright. And so that's how you can fix it. And I do hope you're playing along with me because I can tell you this all day long, but until you do it for yourself, this is kind of hard because I'm holding the, the paper up and I'm trying not to let it buckle, but. And now the more I use it, the more it's, now we're almost at, at purple correctly. And it's still not that purple, keep going. All right, next we will take our red and green. We're just going straight with red. A little bit of the blue. And we're adding yellow. I feel like it needs just a touch more yellow. and that's pretty mid-green. Okay, so we're going to take, I'm gonna take the green and I'm just going to swatch it here. And again, same thing where it's a pretty color, but if we look outside, 
there really isn't going to be grass that is that just that color. It's going to have other colors inside because we're going to be adding red. And you could already see if you were watching this, like it transformed it. I'm going to try to do a little less. Almost immediate. This is one of my favorites. to do. I use this a lot, especially when I'm doing florals. These are beautiful greens. They're like um, very rich with a lot of depth. Now what you'll notice here is we're going into brown and so that's what you call the mud. But they're beautiful browns. And then lastly we are going to take and blue. So our orange we're going to have to mix and we're going to do our red again. Do a little bit more this time, try to make it a little more juicy. And yellow. Okay, it's a pretty need just a little bit of more yellow. Okay, and then our neutralizer is gonna be blue. And on this, I'm not gonna put that much blue because you guys saw how, well, I'll put a little more. <laughs> okay. okay, so we're gonna take our orange And again, it's just very, even though that orange is not a true orange, it's a little bit more of a red orange, but um, in my eyes anyways. Okay, we're going to take just a dab of the blue and you can already see, look how beautiful that new orange is. It's just so much richer. And once these dry, they'll be even nicer. I think I might have added a little bit too much because we went straight into like a brown. And then once we start getting out of the brown and we start going towards the blue again, you're going to get some gorgeous colors. Probably one of my favorite sets. Here we start getting some beautiful like it's, they're just um, so dimensional. They're not flat colors. I'm trying to mix it so I don't separate. Look at that green. And I don't know if I'm getting more colors because I just enjoy this palette more than I did that. But look at those colors. I'm gonna turn this this way and keep going. Oh, that might be my favorite one yet. And I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this so that you can see the color. Getting closer to the blues. 
And let's see, what's our original blue? Just true. So we're we're still not there, but I think we can still go. It's so pretty. Um, another thing is we can now let's mix, let's add just since we're playing, let's add some of this brown to it. Let's see what color we get. So pretty. Anyway, so you can just sit here all day. I mean, look how many colors we created with a just three colors. So we started with just those. That's all I've used on my palette. And then I mixed them to make the secondaries. So we started with the primaries, mixed them to make the secondaries. And with the secondaries, I mean, look at all the, the different shades that we got. And they're gorgeous. Those like teals are, I don't know, you can't buy those in a tube. Stay tuned for our next video where we'll dive a little deeper into theory and have a few more terms that you're going to learn. You're gonna need any kind of primary set, which can be acrylics, watercolor, or even cheap craft paint, which is what I'll be using, plus a tube of white and black.